Hey guys, this is Bronk Outdoors. I'm going to be taking you through how I make a third hand archery target. We're in desperate need of a target, and I've seen these built online. I always thought they looked great because they're nice and big. And they, they have a lifetime warranty from third hand on the target skins. And uh, basically, you just build a box and you stuff it full of clothes. Then you put the target skins on both sides and you're supposed to have a lifetime target we'll see we'll see how it works out all right guys i already built the box i just uh i went to lowe's and got the lumber i bought just one two by twelve by twelve and i had them cut it one board 33 inches and or two boards 33 inches the top and bottom and then the sides I had them cut at 33 and a half and I would have made it 36 the size 36 so it would be a 36 by 36 inch box because I bought the three foot skins but that wouldn't fit in my car and I, I want to make this portable so I can take it places and wheel it around and shoot it and uh, I'm gonna put wheels on it but I just I don't know what this joint's called, but I just lined up. I just did the the butt of the 2x12 and screwed it in from the side. I did five deck screws on the side. It's pretty solid. Wiggles a little bit, but that'll shape up once we get stuff full of clothes really tight. So now I'm going to add the wheels. Alright guys, I have this 2x4 cut to the length I need it to. And I'm going to screw these casters on. These are 8 inch fixed casters from Harbor Freight. I think they were like $12.99. And I just I bought two of them. And I'm going to use this 2x4 and I'm going to attach it to the, the rest of the box when I'm done. So I'll just mark it. So I have it marked and drilled. And now I'm just going to bolt the wheels casters onto the 2x4. And I'm just using an inch and a half. That's what it says, but it's obviously longer because it works with this. Uh, quarter inch bolts and nuts. You don't need any lock washers or anything because it's just wood. Alright guys, the casters are all screwed into this 2x4 and I had to put a spacer with like a half inch OSB plywood I had to make a spacer nine and a half by three and a half because the bolts and the end of the, and the nuts were running into the the two by twelve so I had to make a spacer and we'll just screw three straight through that and uh, to line it up I'm just gonna push it till it's flat and the wheels are touching and then I'll put a mark on both sides, on both sides. So I have my mark, and I will pan up. Now I'm gonna flip it over. If I line it up with the marks, then this is where the wheels are just touching the ground when the when the rest of the box is. I want the wheels to be touching the ground about a quarter inch lower. Or I want I want the box to be sitting up just a little bit so I can wheel it around a little bit easier. So I'm gonna move my dots down a quarter of an inch. And then make a line. Alright, so I have it all lined up on the marks that were a quarter inch lower and I got it even left and right. So the wheels are centered with the rest of the box and now I'm going to pre-drill and screw it in. Alright, so the 2x4 with the casters is all screwed on there and I put about 50,000 
long screws in there because it's going to be on under a lot of weight and I don't want it to strip out or fall out. Uh, I'm not sure how much these things weigh when they're fully loaded, but I think it's close to or over 200 pounds, so it's going to be under a lot of weight. Hope it works out all right. Next thing is I want to add a handle so I can wheel it around on this back side. Yeah, that's nice. I want to add a handle down here somewhere with uh, some scrap OSB that I have laying around. I think I'm going to cut it so it's all the way flush with this and then I'm going to have it extended so that it adds some stability and then uh, I think I'll cut some notches in it so I can hold onto it better and I don't have to get up under it when it's on the ground and it uh, should turn out good I'm not sure what it'll look like quite yet I don't have that fully planned out but we'll see how it goes it's uh I think I'll make it, let's see, how about we make it 27 inches long, that's a good number right, should be pretty stable. inches wide. I saw on this other side I basically made two slits and then I wasn't thinking and realized I don't have a tool to get this last little piece right here. So then I just decided to angle it up to it and there's a little slit but that's alright. Maybe I'll fill it with caulk or something. But now I just have a handle like that and I just took this this edge of where I stopped cutting and this bottom corner and just connect them together and so that's what I'll do on this side. Alright, so now I have this little piece, two nice handles and that bottom edge so we'll screw it on. Well I have this support all screwed on and the wheels are on and the box is ready and my target skins aren't here yet so I can't complete it but I have the basic frame all done. It's the first time I picked it up. Pretty nice. Turned out better than I thought it would. Wheel's nice. It's not loaded up yet, but it still acts like it's light. And my target skins should come in tomorrow or maybe Friday. Today's Wednesday. But I will uh, update the video when they come in. The target skins came in today and I just got done nailing in both sides and they recommend using staples but I didn't have a stapler here and I didn't realize that so I just used these nails with uh, fat heads on them. It should work alright. They also recommend putting trim over it but I think it's just for looks. Um, if I end up needing it for 
keeping these skins on tight, then I'll put it on later. I'm going to try this first. But both sides are done. Now I'm going to unscrew this top board and flip it open so I can stuff the clothes in. They recommend cutting a trap door in in the directions, but I've seen this done on Archery Talk. I thought this looked like a like a good way to do it too. And I wouldn't have to cut a trap door in, so I'm gonna try it this way. Well I almost forgot to put these two by fours on and uh, I unscrewed this top board, but I wanted to put these two by fours on before I did that so that these uh, sides would stay in place the whole time and it'll take a little of the pressure off of the clothes when it or of the target faces when I step it full of clothes and maybe it'll help with the help make it not bulge out a little bit and maybe make it flat. So uh, but now I can take this top board and try to flip it up. There we go. See? And then stuff it full of clothes. And I should be able to shoot it. Alright, so I think I got it all packed. Ran out of old clothes to put some plastic and trash in there, but it's all stuffed in now. And it shouldn't hurt anything. But uh, the last thing I'm going to throw in is the actual packaging from third hand. And I'll show you the warranty. There's a lifetime guarantee. If they're shooting, you wear a two inch hole in every aiming spot. Take a picture and email it to Third Hand Incorporated at TWC.com and we will send another set of skins for free. So that's pretty special. Third Hand is made in the USA, it's kind of chopped off. And you don't find that very often anymore. But, oh, and uh, also throw in the instructions. Take a screenshot of that if you need to. But you can also find instructions online. He has, like, he has a bunch of threads on Archer Talk showing different ways to make it. And all of them are good. All of them will work. But uh, I took his most recent way and I kind of made it my own. That's all stuffed in there now. So I'll we'll take this hammer out and stuff this down in there. It should be really tight when you're done stuffing it. I'm gonna get the drill and screwing these last four holes. I already have the the back two in for like a hinge, and this back side is already nailed to it. That way, you only have to work to get this front side back on. All right, so I have this top board screwed back down and it's stuffed tight. I'm gonna wait to nail this this side of the target face on until after I make sure it's tight enough and after I make sure it stops arrows. That way if it doesn't I can just unscrew it and flip it back up and add more clothes. And I don't have to worry about taking the nails out. But now I'll take these 2x4s off and we'll see how it does. Well it stays, stays together so that's good. Kind of a kind of a flat spot. That's okay. Just kind of testing the clothes, making sure they make sure it feels tight in all places.
This side actually turned out a lot flatter for some reason. I don't know why. This side looks a lot better. See, this side has kind of a divot in it. But I bet, oh, I bet that'll go away once I staple this top on tight. But we're going to take it out back and see if it stops there or else it's ready to go. I'm a little nervous. Why? It's too small. Think so? I don't know if I can hit it. Curtis says it's too small of a target. He doesn't think he can hit it. This will be the first time shooting it. Hope it stops the arrow. Where are you going to shoot? I don't know. The T, maybe? Did you get the whole thing stuff? Yeah. Stopped it. I hit the tee. It's like 15, almost 20 yards. Okay, here's the real test. Yeah, that was with a uh, Point Nitrum Turbo, 26 inch draw, 65 pounds, shooting a 505 grain arrow. And his bow is Botech. RPM 360 at 30 inch draw and about 65 pounds with the 500 grain arrow. And it stopped them both. We'll go see how far they penetrated. Neither of them are poking out the back, so that's good. You're just excited right now. Cool. <laughs> Easy error removal. Alright guys, I've had the target for about a month. I didn't want to put up a video if I didn't know it didn't work. And uh, I shot it every day this past month, well, almost every day. And it still looks brand new. Um, there's no big holes or anything where I've been shooting. There's no holes falling out. It's just it's solid still. It's still stops the arrows just as well as it did when I first made it. So I don't see it wearing down anytime soon. As you can see, I ended up putting on trim boards all the way around because after a couple of weeks, the skins were kind of pulling out. I could see that it probably needed something uh, to go around it. And the uh, reason I didn't do it in the first place was because I couldn't find a, a, a trim board that would be cheap and uh, I thought it would look okay. It would have been like $20. I, did, I thought I'd try to save a buck or two. Ended up needing it, but I found these boards. They're like half inch by inch and a half. And then I just got two really long sections and cut them down, and it ended up being like $6 to trim the whole thing. And I think it was well worth it because it looks nicer now, and it's a lot more functional. When I did the trim boards, I ended up taking out all the stuffing, um, got out all the clothes and everything, and then I screwed it all on both sides and put the 2x4s to keep it centered. I put the 2x4s actually on the trim boards, and when I did that, it was kind of raised off the target scan a little bit, so it didn't make any of those lines like it originally did. So that turned out a lot better. One thing that I didn't mention is when you put the faces on in the beginning, before you staple them on, staple on some black contractors garbage bags and it keeps the whole target a uniform color, um, just makes it a lot nicer looking. I didn't show a lot of the clothes stuffing. Basically what you do is you just either wad them up or you just lay them in there. Uh, you just put them where you want and then Stuff them down really tight. That's the important thing. It has to be really tight. You don't have to cut them up or anything or do. It's not a lot of work. You just stuff it all in there. It has to be tight. And uh, if, if you get it tight enough, it's not going to get past or anything. It's plenty, plenty wide enough at 12 inches that it's, it's going to stop pretty much all bows. And it's going to last a long time. 
my total cost on this target was about $85, $86 with the trim. Um, so it's very reasonable. It's less than a, like a good broadhead target or it's about the same as other bag targets, but I think it'll last twice as long or way longer than that. It's, I think this thing will last for years and years and years and then it has that lifetime warranty on all the skins. Um, so it should last a long time. The thing that's different about my third hand archery target is obviously that it's on wheels. And I think that's the only way to do it because if you just have a target that's stationary and a in like a post or something and, and it's really limited on what you can do with it unless you have a really long range that you put it at and I don't have that in my house I can only shoot like 40 yards so I have to take be able to take my target somewhere and shoot when I want to shoot longer distances like 80 and whatnot so I can just put it on these ramps and wheel it right into my car and uh, and the uh, wheels work really good, even on rough ground. I was surprised at how easy it is to wheel it. It's pretty heavy, but it really isn't unmanageable at all and not tippy. And uh, it's really easy to get it around. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you hope you think this is a good method. I know it worked for me. Uh, show your support, like the video, and subscribe to Runk Outdoors.